All right, I'm going to get started. I had to take a little break there because the mailman was here and it's my dog's most exciting part of the day. Um, but uh, I will be leading the call today. Melissa is under the weather, unfortunately. So again, thank you all for joining our fifth installment of the briefing. I believe it's our last scheduled installment, but that may change depending on what happens with the legislature. Um, so I am going to share my screen and then we can just dive into things. All right, I'm going to make the assumption that folks can see that. If you can't, please come off mute and tell me that you cannot. Um, but again, welcome. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, I spent all day in the Capitol today, and I can say that I probably know less today than I thought I knew um, this morning, uh, just sort of indicative of how Harrisburg works. But some of the rumors um, we're hearing, some of these I shared previously, and, and we're still hearing them. Um, there are some rumors that budget code bills like the fiscal code um, and the tax code could be finalized or passed this week. It seems less likely with each passing day. Um, as of now, they have not been passed and tomorrow is the last session day for the month. Um, I started the morning being told by um, a member of the administration that the administrative code and the fiscal code will be passed today. Um, every office in both chambers I met with said, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So that is, again, just really indicative of how things work um, in Harrisburg. And so also rumors that the December um, session days will be canceled. Um, that's still out there. Not sure if that will happen or not. I think it depends on what they get done this month. And then I just heard Senate Bill 831, something we've discussed previously. This is the carbon capture and sequestration bill coming from Senator Yaw. I heard it's very likely there will be some amendments offered up to that tomorrow um, to make the bill a little bit better, but I imagine it's something that we'd we would probably still be opposed to. Um, but again, rumors have not seen any amendment language regarding that bill yet, but that's what we're hearing. And then um, four session days remaining for both the House and the Senate. So again, very little time to get anything meaningful done. The one uh, sort of big thing that did happen, community solar um, has officially been introduced or another version of community solar. This is House Bill 1842 from Representative Peach Wire. It authorizes community solar in Pennsylvania. There is no grid services payment, which was one of the big um, sticking points previously. Uh, under this bill, the PUC has broad authority to do quite a few things. Um, one of those things is establishing a bill credit. Um, DEP and the PUC may also issue temporary regulations to quickly implement the program that would expire two years after publication, so making this um, sort of a pilot program. And then it also allows state and federal funds to be used for cost recovery by the electric distribution companies. Um, there's a pre prevailing wage requirement in there, so hopefully labor can be on board. And then um, a decommissioning plan is required. So all in all, a pretty decent bill. And as I had mentioned previously, you know we're hopeful that this can get support um, in both chambers. There are 25 co-sponsors as of right now, and five of them are Republicans. So again, that's a, that's a good signal. Don't expect any movement on this the remainder of this year, um, but early next year, we would be hopeful for a hearing and then possibly a vote afterwards. Um, but again, everything is very preliminary, but a step in the right direction, getting this language introduced. And then the Reggie decision, something we talked about last week that was big news. We still have not gotten any clear signals from the Shapiro administration other than regarding um, some timing that they will probably not wait until the last minute to let us know or, or publicly announce um, what they're doing. But again, I have no idea if they're going to appeal or not appeal. Um, we like to believe that they will appeal. We do have a whole host of items, um, action items that folks can take, and they're also all linked in the briefing digest that we'll send as a follow-up. So we do have our action alert that a lot of folks probably received, but please share. And if you haven't taken action, um, please do that. There's also a text bank that we're gonna be working on that um, Melissa will be leading. You can email her to sign up for that. And it's it's really simple. There's a, a 15 minute training if you haven't done that. And it pretty much just involves like clicking a button over and over because we're trying to reach, I think all 32,000 of our members. So that's a, it's a lot of clicking, but if you're interested in that, um, please follow up with Melissa. 
And again, a letter to the editor um, definitely can be impactful. We know that the administration pays attention to that. So if folks want to write a letter to the editor, um, our new clean energy person, Nate, developed some really excellent talking points there, and we're more than happy to help folks craft that or help with um, submissions. So if you have not done any of these things, please consider doing so. And then there's always the option of calling the governor's office. So again, we need to keep the pressure on the administration when it comes to appealing the recent um, Commonwealth Court decision regarding Reggie. And then as far as committee meetings go, as I've said before, things are definitely winding down. Um, the only committee meeting that is on my radar right now is the December 11th House Environmental Resources and Energy meeting on the alternative energy portfolio standards. Again, it has not been officially sunshined, um, but as we understand, it should be happening December 11th. And when that is updated, we will um, put the, the link for the live stream in the notes for this meeting. And then I do also want to flag that our, our friends and partners, conservation voters of Pennsylvania and Penn Future, are hosting um, an event to discuss the results of the recent judicial and county elections and the impacts that they have on our environment and our work. Um, a lot of other partners, Sierra Club, Clean Air Action, we're all um, co-sponsoring this, um, and some of us will also be in attendance. So please consider um, taking the time to join that um, tomorrow, I believe tomorrow is Thursday, um, November 16th at, at 6 p.m. The registration link is here on the slide and the slides will be shared afterwards. Um, and if you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to us, but um, a nice deep dive on, on the recent elections coming from our partners. And that's all I have. It was a, a short week, not a whole lot happening, but um, some interesting things happening nonetheless. And then I will stop sharing and open things up for questions. Anyone have any questions? And please feel free, Melissa, to flag something if I missed something in my eight minutes. All right, I see Phyllis has a hand raised. Feel free to go ahead, Phyllis. Yeah, I'm sorry I came in very late and I missed um, beginning of your slides. Could you give me a repeat on what you said about the alternative energy portfolio standard? Are they actually increasing the solar and the renewable or just flatlining what's been happening in the past? So I think my initial slide was about um, the community solar bill. It's um, House Bill 1842. So that's separate from APS. It would be a bill that would authorize um, community solar in the state. Oh, today's Tuesday. Thank you, Patricia. All my days have gone together. Um, <laughs> Howard, you have a question? Oh, you're still muted. Okay. There you go. When committee hearings happen, do you have access to those? Do you sit in, in on those? When I have time, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else have any questions? I know it's tough um, doing legislative briefings when not a whole lot is happening. I, think, I see Jim, you have your hand raised. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for that, Jen. Um, so we think we like, Sierra Club likes the community solar bill, at least as it stands right now. Yeah, I mean, I think all of us think that we're well past the pilot program stage for community solar, but the reality of Pennsylvania that this is sort of what we have to live with and the use of federal funds to address the concerns of the EDCs um, seems to be a path to smooth things out and to deal with a lot of the issues that have sort of been roadblocks previously. So I think at this point, we're definitely okay with it. So if it comes up, and the in the new session or in in January. So when do those? Um, well, I guess we need to wait for a hearing. It would be the first thing that happens. Yes. Yeah, so we don't know what um, session days look like next year yet. But Representative Matsey has said that you know they will obviously do a hearing first and then you know an attempt to move the bill later. We don't know what the timing is. I've heard February is a possibility, but again, we we don't know. But there would definitely be a hearing first. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any other questions? Otherwise, this will be a fairly short call, but happy to 
talk about anything we've talked about here or anything we've discussed on on former previous calls is um, up for grabs too. Or we could give everyone 19 minutes of their day back. Hey, Jen, I have a question. Right. I, sure, go ahead. Um, is Reggie all or nothing in Pennsylvania? Is there any possibility of a Reggie light given that we are Pennsylvania? Or, 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 is, there, or is there certain uniformity or conformity that goes along with the other 11 states? So the rule, so the DEP went through a two plus year um, rulemaking to establish Reggie. And so you know, there is no Reggie light version unless the state wanted to come up with a rule that um, was a Reggie light version. And then even then, I, I doubt that um, you know, Reggie Incorporated would be willing to accept something less, you know, so we're sort of in a situation right now where it's like we either have Reggie, we're going to, you know, move forward and appeal this, or we're not going to have Reggie at this point. Now, the legislature can always authorize Reggie, but I don't think anyone here is going to hold their breath for um, a legislative authorization for Reggie. And again, they could do some sort of weird Reggie light. We know that um, one of the Senate leaders wanted to do a Pennsylvania only Reggie version, which I don't even know what that would mean. I'm guessing just trading within the state, um, but it doesn't really make sense when there's something tried and true already out there. So yeah, as of now, that seems to be the only alternative we have is just Reggie. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else have other questions? All right, going once. And, and please pay attention to um, the notes that are gonna be sent out probably tomorrow. There's um, a lot of actionable items in there, just a lot of stuff um, going on. And and please just keep a, a look at that. Oh, they're, they're in the notes now, thank you. Um, they're in the chat actually right now, thank you, Melissa. But yeah, please pay attention to those. We will update those as things change, um, meetings coming up and just bits of interest um, as the weeks go on. Uh, and yeah, it's sort of a living document, so please just pay a close eye to that. But yeah, if no one has any other questions, I can let everyone go. Right, going once, going twice. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you for joining. Take care. Have a good evening. Thanks, Janice, as always. Appreciate it.